Hey friends out there, this is Thursday, March 3rd, 3-3, 2022, and it is just about, uh, oh, almost exactly 5.30 in the morning here in Northern California, and as usual, I'll talk about a few different things today. Listen, I want to say this much, I want to be very clear about this, that in an attempt to be who I really want to be without conscious, deliberate compromise, I must be on everybody's side. And uh, it gives me a great deal of peace of mind to be that person, to be an egalitarian, to be just into simple things like justice and, and fairness. And... Uh, so that's, you know, why I tell people that I don't care who you are. You could be the most vile person in the world, but I'm not your owner. I'm not your judge. I'm not the one that is going to decide where you go from here. That's between you and your owner, your maker. Uh, you know, each person has to deal with their own life's consequences for their decisions, for being the person that they choose to be, because that, at the end of the day, is what it is. We're making our own free will choice to be the people we want to be. And to understand that things like conscience have great value. It's akin to the soul. That there's a reason why people care about this thing. It's an invisible, intangible thing, like a conscience, like the soul. But it's real. I mean, who could deny that it's real? That the vast majority of people value these invisible things. That they have boundaries they've set up. And in, in saying, you know what, I could live with this or that, but I'm not willing to live with that or the other thing. Okay? Everybody does it. I mean, I can't speak for some psycho killer out there. I mean... For God's sake, I mean, who doesn't feel like a different species when you hear about some of the stuff that goes on? I watch the crime shows. I think, what? what in the, I just, it's beyond me. Does that mean I'm perfect? No. I'm just like every other human. I'm flawed in many ways. But, you know, God uses us all for some purpose. And basically the purpose that I've stumbled upon is that he just wants friends. He likes friends. He likes to be liked. He wants more than just our love and admiration and, and respect, but he wants to be liked. And it's a beautiful thing when you realize that really is what we all kind of want because love is cheap, really. You know, I mean, okay, I, I mean it. In the, in the topical sense, okay, is that, you know, love our enemy. Because a lot of people would say, hey, you know, I know that's in the Bible, Jesus said it, but it's got to be a typo because that's really prima facie stupid, you know, that you, you, that's, why would you, you know, love some vile character out there? I don't know, but you can't feign it. So it's it's kind of a big deal to try to wrap our minds around what God is trying to say, what Christ is trying to say there. You know, he wants us to have peace. He doesn't want a bunch of psychos living in our head. You know, I mean, we got to forgive. We got to say, not my property. I I understand God's heart and God wishes none to perish, but all to come to repentance. That God does not delight in the destruction of wicked. That God wants us to emulate Him, and He wants us to love one another. And you got in order to love one another, you got to care about each other. I know there's things we don't care about. I say I don't care about this or that all the time. It's just a means to escape dealing with something maybe I should care about. But there's stuff that you don't care if it's trivia. I mean, what do I care about what the Kardashians are doing today here? you know, some other famous person. Yeah, I could say I don't care about that. But uh, when it comes to human beings, I must care. If I want other people to care about me, to love me, not on a superficial level, but deep down inside as a brother or a son or a dad, you know, something like that. 
like their own family, that's what I want to offer them too. So you understand why I say I'm on everybody's side because I really, I am, I'm trying to be. And in an attempt to do that, there's something else I've stumbled upon and that is this whole political party thing and how divisive that is by design. I really believe that. That there is, at the end of the day, there's evil genius that has just fostered this along in our society. I'm talking America. I can't speak for other nations right now. Okay, all I'm speaking for is as an American, born and raised and devout believer in the God-given rights of our Constitution. Okay, I love it. Free speech, I love it. Second Amendment, I love it. I love it. It's a, it's a great thing to have. We're very unique pe people. That's why so many people covet us and want to come here because they know that we are kind of a special breed, okay? But we've dropped the ball hard and heavy, and it's come at the hands of evil men, bad actors. I mean, I love them. I don't like them, but they need to be exposed. They don't like it, but this is that time in history when it's all hitting the fan, everything's coming out. They can't hide anymore. They can't act in stealth anymore. And I'm going to explain that to you. They, they control us with the purse strings. This is how it all works. Okay, who can say a political party isn't like a team? And who can say teams aren't by nature, auto, by automatic default position? They're, they, they work on adversity, right? you know, winners and losers and all this kind of crap. And it's all controlled by moneyed people. Okay, and evil genius is very tricky, very cunning, very sneaky. They act under the way of radar. They're very stealth in the way they operate. And they've been doing it for, listen, it's the same caliber, the same mentality of people at the uppermost echelons of power in the world, controlling the purse strings that have been doing it ever since the inception of any form of money. Okay, no other creature has this burden. But who can honestly say that's in their right mind that humanity isn't obsessed with money? And not just in America, but all around the world. Civilization, and it ain't right. It ain't good. It's a big big problem we got to get off the junk man we're all we're all addicted to it that was the plan they didn't want money to be less relevant in our lives by doing what it would have done organically naturally if we had any semblance of true capitalism involving supply and demand your money would have gone up in worth and i'll explain it very simply succinctly and in a nutshell for one reason, because we as a purportedly civilized society have found easier and easier methods to produce all the stuff, not only that we absolutely need, like food and shelter, our energy needs, potable water, but also trinkets, knickknacks, luxury goods, all the stuff that we our little hearts desire, toys, right? So you understand why your money if left alone to the devices of just society, your local community, okay, if all this crap wasn't trickling down from on high, this divisiveness, we wouldn't see it in our local communities. We wouldn't have homeless problems. We wouldn't have people trying to live on minimum wage jobs, being cheated, going to see if they qualify to get food stamps, which they probably do. It's sick. We're sick. My whole life, I've watched this unfold. Go on the wrong direction, my friends. This country's been going down the tubes at the hands of evil men and a multitude of minions that have said, hey, go with the flow, man. Jump on the bandwagon, path of least resistance. Uh, sorry, but I don't want to be poor. I don't. Want, I see where this thing is going. Yeah, we're getting divided. The wealth and imbalance and disparity keeps growing. And I'm sorry, but I just, you know, I love money maybe more than you, or just, I don't know, I'm smarter, or more ambitious, I don't know. But I'm going to succeed at this thing called making money. I'm going to be prosperous and successful. End of story. So you understand, but I go to church every week, and I believe in Jesus and God, but you understand money, 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 money. It's, come on, don't be an idiot, don't be a fool, don't be a liar. We all love money. 
God understands. I mean, come on. He was supposed to be blessed. It says in the Bible, you know, you're going to be blessed even now in this time. And you're going to get this and that. I, I know it all. And that the poor you're always going to have. I, I know it, my friends. I know what's written. But we're going to stand alone. No political parties standing beside us. No family members, no friends, no counselors, therapists, pastors, psychiatrists, psychotherapists, or anybody else are going to be standing with us representing no lawyers on our own, giving account for who we decided to be. In this wheel, as far as we know, we got one shot at the apple, one bite at the apple, and then the day of reckoning. And it's decided where we're found worthy and deserving of going from here. And only you can decide that. And I'm just trying to be God's friend. I know what's most valuable to him on this planet. It's you. It's me. It's him. It's her. It's all of us equally. I can't believe anything else about creator God Almighty, male and female, like our divine parents. It's obvious what they want from us. Our love and affections, loyalty, commitment. Friendship, service, his yoke is easy, as load is light. It's not hard to please God. He makes it really easy. He doesn't expect too much from us. He knows we're only human. But if he didn't use flawed people, he wouldn't be able to use any one of us. I'm as human as anybody else out there. I know what it's like. It comes from the original sin, the fall of man. Everything got screwed up, man. God wished he didn't even create us at that point got to understand our origins and what it's the death gene got in us we probably we probably made it with with freaking serpentine beings and the offspring you see these little gray creatures that are depicted they look a little human but they also look a little reptoid you know and then you start thinking well we're probably just lucky we we don't have claws because that probably would have been the next step you know if we mutated too far the reptilian way but we got death, all this disease and death came from that. We didn't have to die. God is quite capable of populating a planet to his satisfaction and then pulling the fertility plug. Who could say he's not? When he can lay out the universe, all the galaxies and solar systems, Wait, he can't do that? He can't end fertility? Of course he can. So, you know, it's only we can decide who we are, man, and that's who I want to be. An egalitarian, a devout egalitarian. Rah, rah, America. Yeah. Let's set an example. Let's be that, that light on the hill example for the rest of the world. Let's change. Let's repent. Let's get God's hand of protection back on us. Let's home end home, homelessness, desperate poverty. If we're willing to spend hundred grand a year on criminals, for God's sake, we could spend half that or a quarter of that at least. On ending homelessness. So, you know, only we can decide as the American people, Team America. So we get rid of all the political parties, make it, I don't know if I'd say illegal, but, you know, make it kind of like ethically criminal. You know, just it's really frowned upon. Okay, if you're trying to be affiliated, it's like affiliating yourself with a gang. Or something. No, you're not. No Democrats. Uh, uh, no, 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 no Republicans. No, 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 no. We're over that. We've evolved as a society.